Now, traffic signs are also something that we have to add. So don't mistake these for temporary signs, which are under the road obstacles. So these are the more permanent ones. So stop, speed limit, and yield signs fall under our traffic sign label. So only annotate the sign itself. No need to annotate the pole that it comes with. And only annotate traffic signs that are in front-facing camera views. So if you notice traffic signs in like the side of your SDC or in rear camera cameras, you don't need to annotate them. Same thing with traffic lights. So traffic lights, rear cameras, uh, sorry, front facing cameras only. And at least 90 degrees from the SDC. So the rule here is if you can see the lights, then you have to annotate them. However, if the lights are completely blocked off or like they're not visible anymore, then uh, you don't need to annotate them. So with traffic lights comes line ID attributes. So line ID is pretty easy. Uh, you just have to assign a number to a traffic light. So <clears throat> I think the number, you can just go in like numerical order so as not to confuse yourself, but the number is unique per line. So when I say line, we can make use of this example here where the traffic lights are on a blue line, right? So since they are on the same line, then you can use the same line ID for these two traffic lights. So you can assign line ID one for frames one to 40 for two traffic lights. Now for the traffic lights on the red line, so these are on a different line entirely, right? So we can no longer use line ID one. Instead, we can move on to line ID two for these two traffic lights and then so on and so forth, depending on how many traffic lights you have in your scene. Now, moving on to doors. So for dynamic objects, the doors are automatically marked as closed because we assume that they're moving and as such, the doors should be, remain closed. However, for stationary objects, this is again, another frame by frame attribute. So check it according to camera view, if it's open, closed or not visible, and then you just apply it to your attribute. So similar rules for our trunk and our hood as long as it's dynamic, mark it as closed, stationary, frame by frame. Now moving on to a school bus. So sometimes you may encounter a school bus. So an important attribute here is if the stop sign is extended. So if it's extended, please mark it as such and also make sure to include it in your sizing. Emergency vehicles, so these are police cars, maybe an ambulance or a fire truck. So we have dedicated labels for these kinds of vehicles, which is the emergency vehicle label. Everything else in an emergency vehicle will be similar to your normal vehicle label, meaning sizing and positioning as well as attributes can be treated the same. Just the label will be different. So like I mentioned earlier, we do have trailers and goat. So these are the different sizes that we have. Most common one you'll see will be a large trailer. And oftentimes you'll probably see traffic controllers as well. So traffic controllers should be labeled as a trailer. Um, I believe it is a small trailer for a traffic controller. Now for towed option, so a trailer can be standalone or it can be actively towed by another object. So if it's attached, yes. If it's not, you can just mark it as no for all frames. Now, one thing to keep note of is when we are connecting the vehicles and the trailers, the vehicle should always be marked as no. So the vehicle is not connected to the trailer. However, the trailer needs to be marked as yes meaning the trailer is connected to the vehicle. So in case that was confusing, uh, do not connect your tow trucks to the trailer, but connect your trailer to the tow truck. So it's just kind of a one-way thing here. 
So yeah, so this is another visual example of that where we connect the trailer to the truck and then the truck, we can just mark it as not connected. Now for pedestrians, we have different kinds of pedestrians depending on their age. Do we have an adult, a child, or an old pedestrian? Most common one you'll find is adult pedestrian. Vehicle sizes, uh, three different sizes here. So first up is a medium vehicle, which are your sedans, your convertible station wagons. And then moving on from that are the somewhat larger vehicles, such as an SUV, a van, or a pickup truck. Now, extra large vehicles, this is where you see your heavy duty trucks, your tow trucks, box trucks. Uh, these fall under extra large. So if you're unsure of a vehicle size, uh, you can ask me on Slack and then we'll figure it out. Now for a bus, so there's a different label for a regular bus. Um, we have a school bus and then we have the regular bus, but annotation should be the same. Just try to keep it all in one cuboid unless it is a bendy bus. Uh, there is a rule when it comes to annotating bendy buses. If the bendy bus is just driving in a straight line, then just one cuboid will do. However, if the bendy bus turns, then we need to divide the bendy bus into two sections. So based on its pivot point. Now, other four-wheeled vehicles is another label on GOAT for vehicles that don't fall under the first three sizing labels, right? So we can have farm tractors, concrete mixers, or boat loaders here. So if you're unsure what the exact label is, then it may well be another four-wheeled vehicle. So more examples of a trailer here. And a parking lot, I believe we went over the parking lot earlier. Now for motorbikes, manual scooters, electric bicycles, or manual bicycles. So sizing and positioning is straightforward. So based on the points, or if you don't have points, you can make use of camera view to guide you on your sizing. Uh, if there is a pedestrian riding on the bike or the motorbike, make sure the pedestrian is included. So other two-wheeled vehicles, um, this could be like a skateboard or a hoverboard. So please annotate these objects if you see them and always include the rider. Now for the ignore label. So like I mentioned earlier, the ignore label can be pretty convenient, especially if you're working on a big highway or freeway scene. So the only, I would say the only uh, rule here is that the road is divided or separated by a barrier. So if the side that your SDC is on is separated by a barrier, then you can cover the opposite side with an ignore label. So I think, yeah, I have another slideshow about ignore labels I can send it with the rest of the materials later yeah that's basically it and also no actually I forgot um, overpasses and underpasses these can be covered with an ignore label as well and unknown vehicle so if a vehicle is too far away or if it's too dark to determine the size of the object or you're just not sure what it could be please make use of the unknown labels. So these labels or these attributes, like the unknown or not visible attributes, are here. OK, is my audio OK? Hello? Yes. Yes, okay, thank you. All right, so we're almost done. So we have final few attributes, which is the obstacle attributes. So these are our cones. I think you guys are familiar with a uh, majority of these, right? So barrels. So again, these are attributes, not labels. The labels to this would be road obstacle. Now, potholes can be a little bit tricky, but generally they're indentations on the ground. 
that are found on the side of the road or on the drivable surface itself. So if a pothole is large enough where it could cause some issues or it just makes you think like, oh, if I was driving here, I would want to avoid this, then yeah, you have to annotate that pothole. <clears throat> now, temporary signs or triangles. So a lot of times this comes with construction work. So you'll notice that fairly quick. So please annotate these as well. And then, sorry, and then lastly, we have the other attribute. So if you find a road obstacle that doesn't quite fit all the other attributes, feel free to use this one for it instead. And also, quick reminder, these attributes are applied automatically to all 40 frames. So you can just double click on the cone attribute and then that should do it. So stop signs and yield signs, these are temporary. So separate from our more permanent traffic signs and speed limit signs. Now, how to annotate some of these objects? So for pedestrians, we wanna include the arms and the legs. Uh, that's the important part here. If a pedestrian is kind of like holding something, if you can exclude that, that'd be great. If you can't, then that's fine as well. So just make sure that the limbs are all correctly positioned. Now for four-wheeled vehicles, so if you have a crane like this one, like the first image here, and if the crane is extended, you will need to include the whole arm in the sizing. So even if that makes your object wider or larger than it normally should be uh, we still have to do it so please include that same thing with like a snow plow so that needs to be included in your sizing as well now for large vehicles or extra large vehicles and the trailer this is how we like to annotate them so annotate the trailer in one single cuboid and then for the extra large vehicle Oftentimes you will have a pivot point, which is like the six wheel. So that's where you can stop your, uh, the extra large vehicle cuboid size. So for buses, so this is the example of the bendy bus where we had to sort of separate the bus into two cuboids. So school bus include the stop sign, whether it's extended or not. And emergency vehicles, just make sure to include the siren, which is oftentimes what they will come with. So that's an extremity that we can include. And then for bikes, so this is how we size bikes that are standalone or scooters or bikes with a person. So make sure that your positioning is accurate and at least not bleeding out of the cuboid. <clears throat> And then same thing with the motorbikes, it's very similar to our um, bicycle, but we don't include the side mirror here. And then traffic sign, we went over this, don't include the pole. And then sometimes, <clears throat> sorry, sometimes you will have uh, grouped road obstacles. Like if you notice, there's a lot of cones uh, like this one, like on a sidewalk, for example, and if they are at least a four, within a four meter range of uh, the drivable surface, then you can use a road obstacle or sorry, you can use an ignore label to cover all of those cones. But this only works in certain cases. Now moving on to parking lots. So parking buildings um, can be found on GOAT as well. And the rule here is if you have visibility of the vehicles, then you can cover the entire floor with an ignore label. So like this example here, as you notice, the parking lot is pretty far away. Camera view is not the best. So we can't really confirm if we can see vehicles, right? So even if you don't have, even if you have points rather, so even if you have points of a vehicle inside the parking lot, but you can't see the park uh, you can't see the vehicle on camera view then you don't need to annotate it with an ignore label 
only use the ignore label for floors with visible vehicles. So that is the main rule here. Now, for overpass and underpass, you can use an ignore label for them. So again, the ignore label has many uses and a lot of them will really make your task easier. It'll kind of streamline the process of your work. So make sure you're using them correctly. So yeah, I think that's it for a lot of our um, labels and attributes. Do you guys have any questions? Any questions so far or are we good? Okay, great. Uh, but before we end, I kind of want to go over ignore labels just as a one last thing. So here's a new slide. So this is how we use ignore labels. So we have a camera view of some live tasks or not live tasks, but like some tasks. And the opposite side of the SDC is covered with an ignore label. So if it is the opposite lane, you can cover it with an ignore label. And as you guys can see, these are the barriers. So these are median barriers. So as long as there is no gap in your barrier, you can use an ignore label. However, if there is a gap in the barrier that allows a vehicle to turn or just allows a vehicle to pass through it, then the opposite side of the SDC needs to be annotated individually. So be careful of that. So try to observe your scene first and then make sure that your barrier is intact. There's no gaps between them before you put down an ignore label. And then also do the same. So just to make sure that um, if there are gaps that you're annotating all the objects individually. So it's more work with a gap in the barrier, but it's still pretty important. It's still a pretty important thing to take note of. Now, like I mentioned earlier, an overpass or an underpass are pretty viable examples of when we can use an ignore label. So make sure to cover uh, the the overpass or the underpass and the height at least needs to be tall enough to cover the roof of the tallest vehicle. So this is the same thing as a highway ignore label. So we don't want the ignore labels to be too short. We want the ignore labels to be tall enough to cover the tallest vehicle. So if it's a truck, then your ignore label needs to be big enough to cover the whole truck. OK, so not just in width or length, but most importantly, in height as well. So this can be easily confirmed by a lighter points or camera view. So parking buildings, again, if you can see it, you can cover the entire floor with an ignore label. And then lastly, um, vehicles that are on a ramp. So on ramp, off ramp, meaning they are exiting. They could be exiting the lane or they could be merging. Merging. So if they are attempting to merge with the opposite lane, then you can cover that specific area. So we kind of call them a ramp. So you can cover the ramp with an ignore label as well. So just try to angle your ignore labels to make them look clean and positioned well enough to cover all the points or the vehicle if the points are not available. But yeah, I believe that should cut it for our ignore label. And if you guys don't have any questions, oh, I see a question. 